Hello there kitties, I'm Kerry, the Vacuum Tube Witch, showing you a little project that I did a year ago, the VS1 Vector Scope. This is a simplified uh, oscilloscope that has uh, horizontal and vertical um, deflection uh, amplifiers. It has no time base, it has uh, the function selector switch here. It has a built-in uh, 1 kHz sine wave generator. It has a uh, component tester, aka um, the signature tracer that I built um, according to Mr. Carson's lab schematics. And uh, it has an uh, audio input uh, for left and right uh, channel that I'd like to show you and modify because uh, I want to use this little scope for demonstrations. Here let's uh, let's fire it up. Some music from uh, Jerobeam Fenderson. Better light on that. Anyway, if you know the um, deconstruct um, track uh, from Jerobeam Fenderson. And uh, and you'll see the demo on on YouTube. You'll notice that uh, what was um, shown uh, here as the as the vertical uh, changes in uh, in the image uh, are in fact horizontal. And uh, sometimes you just. Uh, have uh, weird swapped wiring in in the uh, audio uh, system between the left and right channel because um, the left uh, left channel would be for the vertical and the right would be for the horizontal deflection. And I'd like to modify this little scope, adding a little switch uh, to swap the channels. I would also like to add uh, two more switches for swapping the phase, the polarity on uh, on the deflection plates, and that would allow me to have a uh, perfectly configurable uh, display uh, in case um, the recorded uh, audio is. Uh, is out of phase. Uh, in that case, normally um, I would get a reversed in image. I've, I'd get it either upside down or or swapped uh, left with right. I'd like to add the simple features on this uh, scope um, that would allow me to. Swap the polarity and um, adjust it um, to um, the input signal without having to use uh, any external um, phase inverters uh, or any crossover cables um, that would swap the left and the right. So let's get to the bench. Anyway, I will also show you how this little scope looks from the inside. One view of the controls on the scope. Not sure if you can see it correctly, but uh, 
This uh, this scope was uh, based on uh, an enclosure and the CRT from uh, an old uh, single channel Polish um, hybrid and, uh, vacuum tube and transistor oscilloscope that uh, didn't work and uh, I tried to restore it, uh, failed. But I got uh, inspired by Mr. Carlson's lab to make a signature tracer, and uh, and that's uh, that's what it also has. So the the controls are the brightness, focus, uh, horizontal and vertical uh, position. Those are the controls for the generator because uh, it has a built-in uh, oscillator that. Uh, is available on this BNC jack, but it can uh, also uh, accept uh, the signal from an uh, external generator with a switch. Uh, this is uh, basically for the curve tracer. The audio input is not affected by, by it at all. The Horizontal and uh, vertical levels um, are adjusted with the same knob. This is a dual ganged potentiometer. This is the lever for the generator signal, both going out and uh, and going back to the curve tracer. This is the Ten times uh, atten attenuation and uh, input and attenuation ten times or um, or one time. The power switch, the horizontal and vertical input. The back side of the oscilloscope. Uh, has uh, some holes from uh, the original scope. The only active component here is uh, the DC barrel jack. <laughs> so let's uh, take it apart, look what's inside. The vacuum tube and the protective uh, cover because um, the CRT tends to emit uh, X-rays. The CRT's base is here. The standard uh, assembly technology here at Caritech uh, with the purple string for the cable looms. This is the most important part of the whole oscilloscope because this is the power inverters uh, transformer. This is the original one that uh, was found um, in the stripped um, device. Had to repair it, but it's working. Here you can see some uh, high voltage uh, rectifier circuitry. No, 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 it's not full bridge rectifier. The plate voltage uh, filter cap and the bleeder resistor because uh, it's something like uh, like 900 or, or even uh, 1200 volts across the anode and the cathode. And uh, here is uh, the perf board. Uh, let me let me zoom the the view. Hope you can see it well. 
put some light on it. This uh, this pair of boards uh, here you can see the generator. It's uh, it's made with uh, two TL074s. One of them is the generator and uh, the horizontal or vertical um, deflection. The other one is uh, the other deflection and the curve tracers uh, circuits and the output transistors uh, for the deflection plates uh, are original. The Telefunken uh, BF114 uh, And uh, the rest of the circuitry is the astigmatism correction and uh, the power supply, the power inverter. What I'd like to do with this scope is uh, drilling a hole somewhere around here for swapping the channels on the audio input and I'd also like to drill a pair of holes probably here for swapping the deflection plates that means that uh, I would have to desolder those cables uh, going to to the plates, desolder them from the PCB, add some uh, extensions going down to those switches and route um, the incoming cables back to the PCB. Thinking about the better way to, to do it, the audio left and right mod I can do it uh, right away I have also a different idea that uh, I could uh, as well uh, make the polarity swap on the on the back plate uh, right uh, next to the CRT that would uh, allow me to keep the cable looms intact and I think I'll do it this way because uh, you don't really have to touch those uh, controls uh, all that often they are more like uh, for the service uh, purposes for the configuration uh, in order to make the, the scope well, work with um, the particular recording. So let's get to the work. Got a box of those teeny tiny switches, pretty standard and cheap. We'll do the job perfectly. I need three of them. What's the diameter on that one? It's six millimeters. Very nice. Using a step drill, I can make a hole I need. Hoping I don't damage the the surface on the panel too much. 
I will add the switch uh, right here above the above uh, the audio input. Automated center punch. Drilling. Surprisingly nice. The bird. Those switches are are already used. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Now, oh, and I better use the base nut for them. Maybe, maybe not necessarily for those um, that I'm gonna put on the, the rear panel, but uh, definitely the one that I'm gonna put on the front panel. this one notches up carefully tighten this And soldering time. Should give you a better view. Decluttering the bench. So disconnect one channel. Put it here.
I will use some uh, silver plated uh, wire for for doing those connections. Don't need uh, insulation for it. One is there. The other one. Card joint. Very tricky to do it, maybe I should suck the solder. That's it, the uh, left and right channel swap modification.
Time to test it. Swapping the channels. Working perfectly. So let's move on to the second mod. This one uh, might be a little bit more complicated because uh, in order to do it I will have to unscrew the back panel to be able to get to those uh, connections on the tube socket. And here we've got the deflection plates on those on those wires. That's got a piece of wire. We'll look for the black and white. Looking for my vast uh, storage bin of cables. Oh, there we go. What a perfect cable. I can sacrifice uh, one of the plugs on the end. Should be just what I need.
And this time I have to do two switches and I will do them uh, out of the board. It's a little bit tricky to do them uh, when uh, assembled on the panel. First the, the cross wiring between the poles Let's open one of those holes. Could use a second hand. <laughs> Pretty nice. Now I can route the wire to to the pole. This uh, Plate swap modification will affect uh, the curve tracer and uh, XY scope as well as um, the audio scope. See? I'm going to use the film extractor.
And the other one.
The other one? Back to the scope. Let's get a better view on this one. And the other channel. And let's connect the switches so that um, the upper position is um, the normal position and the lower position is the reversed one because the, the contact is made opposite to the lever then, uh, then here let's uh, get the, the black and the white And yeah, those switches are connected. 
Might be time for a quick test. For this test, I will connect a diode across the curve tracer's input. This nice germanium diode should do the job pretty nicely. Internal generator. Put the function switch to CT. And uh, we can see, uh, let's, let's make it a little bit brighter. We can see a uh, diode's uh, characteristic current uh, versus voltage curve. When uh, swapping the the polarity, horizontal polarity swap, and vertical po polarity swap. I got zapped. <laughs> Pretty nice. I got zapped uh, from 900 volts. <laughs> Happens. Hopefully, um, there's not too much current. <laughs> So yeah, let's put the thing back together. <laughs> Getting zapped, doing project, gaining superpowers. Let's keep it up and I'll be like Electroboom myself. <laughs> okay, let's look for the place where it would be best to put those switches. I think it should be somewhere around this line. Below the CRT. I think the, the best... Uh, The best would be somewhere here. Make the other in line with it. Something like... Something like two and a half centimeter apart. And it's draining time again. This time I will put some wood um, underneath the, the holes. Where did I put it? Getting lost in the clutter. Here it is, the automatic center punch. Uh, put it diagonally and uh, and then uh, at the right angle Fran had a little modification on the center punch because uh, she added a crossbar on uh, on the end. I don't need it. 
I don't uh, use it all that much to to have any problems using it. Some more won't because uh, there's a risk that uh, this will go through a single piece. Those pieces are, are pretty springy. I got them from from uh, my bed. I uh, I replaced them <laughs> because they were broken. That's it, they're pretty nice. No more need for the drill. So it is time to put the thing back together. Strange. Try another one. Perfect. So this would be the vertical. This would be the vertical.
That's it. Pretty nice. Time to put it back together. With this little modification I will be sure that I got the proper image um, with uh, anything I connect to the scope. Tiny mismatch on the holes. First, it's, uh, it's better to screw them in just barely and then tighten them. One seems to be missing. Not a big deal. See? Pretty nice.
Back to the desk. And uh, the, the face swap on the plates, uh, it affects the, the XY position. Not sure how, how I can show it to you. Put it on a glass. Still not, uh, still not uh, that uh, high. Maybe I'll just uh, turn off the overhead light. It's way better. Turning this to the left. After I uh, swapped the polarity, turning it left, uh, moves uh, the dot right, swapped uh, the polarity again, turning it left, uh, moves it down, swap the polarity on Y, turning it left, moves it up now. And uh, back to Jago Beam. Channel swap. Let's find some different uh, visualization that uh, is uh, obviously having its uh, left and right side. Oh yeah, the... Hey you guys, I want to show you something amazing. I'm running an audio signal through an oscilloscope. Yeah, that's Jeremy Thunderson. Exactly the same wave that we're hearing at the same time. On both audio channels. And use them to draw with sound. This, uh, this should move right. Of spare waves can actually draw mushrooms on an oscilloscope. Or butterflies. Or the Death Star. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So that was uh, this uh, little vector scope uh, VS1 project of mine. And, uh, and the modification that I did to it. Hope you like it. Till the next one. Bye.